So in this video we're going to look at Ampere's law, specifically the thin current carrying wire. So I ask you what is the magnetic field some distance r away from an infinitely long thin current carrying wire. It has some current I which I've drawn in red and you'll notice that the wire is in black and it's supposed to extend to infinity and I've drawn it at this angle because I'm going to try and draw everything in perspective. So I ask distance r away what is the magnetic field? First things first, let's draw a circular Amperian surface. Now again, this looks like an oval, but if you were to look at it head on, this is going to be a circle. And we have the current I piercing the direct center of the circle. Now we can consider Ampere's law for this problem. So, closed integral b dot dl is equal to mu naught I enclosed. I can expand the dot product on the left. B dot dl is just magnitude of b times the magnitude of dl times the cosine of the angle between them. I notice in this case, if I use my right hand rule, b and dl are pointing in the same direction at every point along the circle. So the angle between them must be zero, and so cosine of zero is just one. Next, I can look at b at two different points on the circle. And I notice that since they're equidistant from the wire, every point on the circle is equidistant from the wire, the magnetic field must be the same. If the magnetic field is the same, we can pull it out of the integral. And finally, I'm going to sum up all the tiny little pieces dl. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to take every tiny little path and go around the entire circle. That means I'm going to have a total length of 2 pi r. That's the circumference of my circle. Now finally, I need to look at I enclosed. In this case, the current that pierces the Amperian surface is just I. We said at the beginning of the problem, this wire had some current I passing through it. And so when I rearrange terms, I get B is equal to mu naught I divided by 2 pi R. So a few final thoughts. First, we make use of symmetry in the problem to solve for the magnetic field. Uh, we actually use it a few times. We use it when we're looking at B and DL to determine that the angle between them is zero. We also use it when we're trying to find the magnitude of B and learn that the magnitude is the same everywhere so we can pull B out of the integral. Both of those make use of symmetry. Next, you can use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field. Um, and I will explain uh, the right hand rules in a separate set of videos. And finally, I want you to think about how Ampere's law for a thin wire is similar to Gauss's law for a point charge. If you work out the point charge in the thin wire examples, or watch both these videos one after the other, you'll see that the methods we use to calculate uh, the final equations are very, very similar.